Okay, so we can start uh, the fifth lecture of uh, Janos Kula. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for coming all the way in this rainy weather. So, this is the fifth in the series. It involves the, the, the K flatness. So, this is probably the is the most technical topic, though I have to try to, to slide over most of the technicalities and we don't explain what this is supposed to be about. Uh, and so, so it's about K flatness. Uh, why you might ask, why K? And so, at least historically, originally, I have seen. C flatness for Cayley. And so you will see it has a lot to do with Cayley's words, but I needed a new notion. And now, uh, notice that K is exactly the first syllable of K. Uh, it's also the, the first letter of pi. Yeah? <laughs> and in general, I like the letter K. <laughs> And so, so I, I have not yet defined what, uh, what, what exactly the, 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 the moduli problem is, is uh, with pairs, and I don't want to define it. I will give some examples. So, so the same way as when we started with the moduli of curves, then we, we might be interested in the moduli of pointed curves. Okay. So, in higher the dimension, we want to look at pairs where there is a where there is a, there is a variety and there is a divisor. And so, already for curves, it's interesting to assign the different points different weights. And so, similarly, in higher dimension, you want to take this divisor with the various coefficients. It turns out to be that the, the interesting cases are always when the coefficients are between zero and one. But it will not be, uh, be, be, be particularly interesting, uh, um, so, so important for us. But uh, so, but then we we have this problem: of what to do if we have families? Yeah. So as far as defining the fibers, pretty much everything goes as before. So you can do can define the semi-canonical pair. And now, uh, before that, we had this assumption that the relative canonical class, that is Q Cartier, so is a multiple of this Cartier. But here I just sort of twist it a little bit, that is sum. And so this is the, the thing that's supposed to be Q Cartier, some multiple. Well, so let's assume that they are, are some rational numbers. This, uh, that's enough for almost everything, and that will the, make the definitions easier. So. And if you multiply high enough, you clear denominators, and so then it becomes an actual uh, divisor about which I can ask whether it's Cartier or not. Now, but then we are running to the problem to the di r1. So, so normally, you would say that the natural notion is that the di's, they should be flat over the base. Yeah? And so that this is sort of what we sort of hope, but you see an example that this is too restrictive. There are some very simple, simple examples when the DIs they are not flat over the way. So the question is, what should come here? And now, for 30 years, years we had this theory without having an answer to what should go into to this box. And so then. That I won't tell you what should go into this box and and then then some uses and sort of how to to, to work with this. And so the the so, so, so the first example that sort of very clearly showed that the flat is not right, uh, it become by asset. And so uh, again I just describe it locally. I mean I don't pay attention to them from this here. You can add some general ample divisor to it. It's the example. So I take a family of a family of quadrics, the center of pi over t equals zero, then I have, I have a quadric cone, but the general fiber I have a smooth quadric. And so so 
we have seen these examples for site different purposes. And that in the central fiber, I take the divisor, I take one line with coefficient one and two other lines with coefficient one. And then how do I lift this back? So, so the, this line L0, I just lift it back to one line. So the smooth coding, there are two families of lines. The LT is in one family, the LT primes are in a different family. Okay, so then these two are disjoint, but LT intersects of both the, of the them. And now you see the problem here is that here I have two intersecting lines. So the Euler characteristic is one, but in the general fiber, I have two disjoint lines, so the Euler characteristic is two. Okay, and so this is this is not flat. Uh, the singularity is otherwise mild, so it is it, it fits in the semi-local thing. And now here this is irreducible, so if I take them to one at a time, then I have a flat family, but it's very easy to just perturb this a little bit, and then you have examples where these curves are, are irreducible. So, so there's non flatness even irreducible. <coughs> okay, and so, well, now, so the good news is that at least this doesn't happen if the coefficients are larger than one half. So in the previous example, you see this coefficient that caused us as problem, they were exactly <coughs> one half. And it turns out to be that a very extreme case. And so that if the coefficients are larger than one half, uh, then the divisors, and in fact, any, 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 any union of them is flat over the base and the fibers are reduced. So that means that in that case, it's very easy to, 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 to put together the moduli problem. So we can just say that x to s should be flat, and then the di's, they just live in the relative Hilbert scheme of the, uh, for which there is a well-worked down symmetry. But we have seen these examples that as soon as the coefficient they become one half, and then the smaller they get, the wider the example uh, become, then we cannot require flatness. So the question is, is what exactly, exactly can we do in this case? So the one solution is the notion of Mumford divisor. So I came up with this name. So if you, you remember with pointed curves, it was important that the points should be disjoint from the singular side. Now, in higher dimensions, uh, the, the, the disjointness is a two strong conditions, but I'm interested in divisors that are not contained in the singular set. So, uh, let's say that the relative divisor is Mumford if, if at sort of all generic points of all the fiber, uh, the morphism is, is smooth and the divisor is Cartier. So, so this is sort of the simplest way to generalize this, this notion that the extra points should intersect like every fiber only at, at smooth point, and then, then it's a Cartier device. Okay. And so now, so, so then if you have a, a relative Mumford divisor, then you can define the fibers of it as divisor. And so, so I want to point out that the scheme theoretic fiber might pick up some embedded points where the divisor intersects the singular locus because it's not Cartier either. But, but at the generic point is Cartier. I know how to restrict the a divisor when it's Cartier. And then I just take the scheme theoretic enclosure. And so that means that the right notion of the fiber is essentially the scheme theoretic fiber with embedded points removed. And now, of course, this introduces a technical complication that, in, that with removing embedded points, that's, that, that, that's a complicated thing. So, for instance, the upper semi-continuity of, of H0 suddenly might not work because, so for the whole fiber, the upper, upper semi-continuity, but if I remove some points, I, I am removing some sections. And so some of these basic CRM uh, they need to be reproved in this this uh, 
to the setting. And so it, it so it's a work that is a little bit uh, it is more complicated, but on, on the other hand, so probably the very uh, the old algebraic geometry uh, literature most likely worked with uh, sort of this notion. So before Roth and Dick, they they really did not have the notion of embedded points. So they, 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 they of course knew that something is happening. Yeah. So you know when a I mean when a degree three rational space curve specializes to, to a cubic in the plane, then the geometric genus or, or the arithmetic genus jumps. And so so they knew that something is happening there, but they they. they not have it completely for out. Okay, now it turns out that over reduced bases, the notion of buffer divisors is e enough. So, so the, 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 the right definition of the families of families of these pairs, which is the natural generalization of flat families of pointed these these stable curves. Is these pairs? We just have to assume that these divisors, they that they have this Mumford condition. It turns out you don't need to require anything more, but as long as the base is reduced. So uh, let's see what happens over non-reduced bases where the simplest is over the k epsilon. And so now well, the problem here is that that so. You know, what can be simpler is just you take the affine plane and deform it over uh, k epsilon. Well, what can you say about this Picard group? And the plane is at this infinite dimension. Okay. So, well, this is not good news for us. Let's see how can we get such some sort of simple examples. But look at this subscript. Okay. So it's a uh, so so. Know that if I use this to eliminate epsilon, then this becomes x, y, 2n times x. So there's an x squared there. So that means that the quotient is just this. And so that means that the subscheme, this is as nice as possible. It has no embedded it points in the nilpotent structure, but of course I want to move in the k epsilon direction. So it should have a nilpotent structure. But if you look at the fiber, so you, you, you set epsilon equal to zero, then this term dies, this epsilon died, and you just end up. With this, which has lots of torsion. And here, so n is arbitrary, it can go to, 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 in, to infinity. Okay? So that means that, 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 if, that you look up for divisors there. So, in fact, I, 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 I look at divisors that, that a Cartier away from the origin, uh, but they're not assume Cartier at the origin, that they form an infinite dimensional aspect. Okay. Now I don't want an infinite dimensional modular space, so somewhat uh, there are just too many of these. Okay, and so then you work out the projective version of the same examples that if you are just looking at at the number divisors of the projective plane over k epsilon, where the central fiber is just line, and of course there sort of might be some embedded. The, the points, but but when I take the fiber, I just ignore these. Then this is infinite dimension. Okay. And so, well, so how to cut this down to finite dimensions? Okay. Or so this is too many. These deformations are sort of too wide. But and so you see that on the one hand, you say that clearly the problem is that, that I picked up this torsion. Okay. But the, but the point is that on the quadric surfaces, when these two lines that were disjoint yeah, in, in the limit became this, I in fact do pick up a torsion there. So I can't just say that I don't like torsion, I don't consider it. I have to allow some torsion, but, but then clearly I should not allow so the whole possible simple torsion. So, so this was the, the thing that was very unclear for a long time what to do. Okay, and so this leads to, to, to the definition of k-flatness, and so 
Okay, so let's assume that I have a projective morphism pure relative dimension n minus one. I use n minus one because I want this to be divisors on some n dimensional uh, family of variety. And assume that the generic points of each fiber, their the morphism is flat. So this is okay that, that I have this is a uh, Mumford divisor condition that the generic point is is flat and uh, and the embedding the, the dimension is at most n. So you know, the Mumford divisor that it sits on on something something smooth. So that means it's smooth there. The embedding di dimension is at is at most n. So these two are sort of both satisfied uh, by Mumford divisor. Now. As you prefer that as is local with infinite residue field, so just to, to simplify my life, then I say that this is k flat if all I we did explain the start, all images of the E to PNS are flat. So that if I take it and I map it so that it becomes a family of hypersurfaces, then it becomes flat. Okay. Now, why do I say all? So uh, so I, so you see, I mean, there can be some bad so math. Talk? I, we will give you time to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, 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 so either you define the notion of image that this makes sense, or you, you say that you are, you are only look at. And, 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 and maps that are finite and that is generically bi-rational. So, so uh, or, or you just to get sufficiently general maps. But so, so basically you can think that that's sort of all, okay? And so yes, so and, and now uh, sort of in general I say, well, if I have an arbitrary base, then then first I localize and then I do an infinite residue field extension, and so then it's for the, no, 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 you have to prove that this is independent of the residue field extension, but it's no problem. Okay, and so so, so the, what I'm I, I'm I'm saying here, so uh, there is one case where is where flatness is very easy to understand, and that just hypersurfaces in PM. Okay, then flatness. This means simply that I preserve the diffusion. And I say that, well, that if I have something else, then I look at sort of all possible ways that this becomes a family of hypersurfaces, and it should be flat. Okay? And so, well, of course, it's easy to, to say this. Now, sort of, but you have to prove that it has some. And some reasonable properties, and that it is a reasonable moduli theory. So, yeah. So then, sort of, my thesis is that that, that is k flatness. This gives the right notion, the notion for the divisor part of the, the moduli theory. Now, I should add to it that that so before that, when I told you. But was the right notion uh, without the divisor part? I'm completely sure that that is the right notion. Now here, uh, I I sort of like this notion, and, and and as far as I know, there are no other candidates. But but I am not saying that uh, that there cannot be something else. Maybe better or sort of more reasonable. And so this is just the one answer uh, that I know works, but I don't. I don't have a strong feeling that this is the only possible answer. So the, the map from the I to this P N to the S, you said it's just barational, or it's defined everywhere on the. I mean the embedded dimension. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So 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 there are sort of two so. First of all, this map sh should be finite. Okay, so we get this di that, that image is a hypersurface. Okay, mm -hmm. now so so so, so for instance, if this d is for instance double cover of a hypersurface, 
then you sort of might contemplate sort of other images. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, now there's a right way, way, way to define it that in that case the image is the image hypersurface is multiplicity too. But but, but I mean all, all overarching basis you have to, to to think about it. And so so for starters, I'm just saying that if we avoid these two problems, then it is just what it is. That is, it's a scheme theoretic image that I'm developing. What, what was concerning is that you impose this condition about the embedding dimension only generically. Yes, so yes. If at yeah. a special point the embedding dimension is enormous, how can you map it to PN? You just project? Yeah, I just map it to PN. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of a no. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, uh, I will not do this computation, but but I did compute sort of what what k flatness gives for plane curve. Let's assume it's reduced. Okay. Now, so then the flat deformations are just. Sorry. Yeah, we were just wondering. These images in PN are t taken with the reduced scheme structure, right? So just. Uh, yeah, it, just that the it is a scheme theoretic image, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so as long as we don't have this multiple covering problem, I, I just have the scheme theoretic image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then, then, and then the flat deformations is just fx y equals remember some polynomial times epsilon. These are the flat deformations. Now, what if I want the k-flat deformations? Well, so over the smooth points, they are just the flat deformations, it turns out. So that means that over the smooth points, well, I can do this, but I can also do this. I can have a new coordinate, and then we pass some, some phi x, y, epsilon, where these two functions, phi and phi, they are regular. Uh, 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 away from the origin. So these are just the flat deformations of C minus the origin. Okay. Now when is it in K flat? And it's a, 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 a computation that's not too hard so the ones you, you you get the hang of it. So then the first part that should be just regular. So as long as you are deforming it in the same plane, it is just a normal deformation. But in K-flatness, you are allowed to move out in the z-direction. And the condition turns out to be that if I multiply this phi with the partial derivatives of f, then that should be regular. And so, for instance, if I have a, 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 a monomial curve, x is equals y to a, which is the image of t mapping to t to a, t to c, then, then this condition becomes that t to the ac minus a times phi and t to the ac minus c times phi, that should be contained in this ring. So that means these can have actually quite high poles that, that are, are, are sort of still, still okay. Yeah, so these can have quite high poles when this condition is satisfied. So this turns out to be there is an a minus one times c minus one dimensional family of k flat, but not flat deformation. So by accident, this is I believe exactly the flat deformation space, yeah, and then so somehow it means I just double the, the, the dimension of the deformations, yeah. But so 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 so, so at least in, in the plane I don't get anything new, but these curves are allowed to move out a little bit, which is exactly what we have seen the standard examples, you know, when two disjoint lines come together, somehow they they, they really move out in space. Or when the rational cubic becomes planar, it again it moves out in the space direction to get something in. Right? So it cannot move very widely, but it can move move sort of a little bit. So uh, uh, this this sort of actually uh, these are the reasonable and uh, enable control. So it's not that much worse than the uh, the, 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 the flat before. So this is also the number of the mean of, of the sphere in the mean of five. Something like that. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, it, 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 so, so it, 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 it's, it's a, um, 
Yeah, I, 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 I am not sure that, that, that so, yeah, I, 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 didn't, so I believe for non-monomias, uh, the SO is not as nice, it doesn't exactly coincide with this, but so the close to it, so. Uh, okay, so, so, now, uh, then as I probably mentioned long ago, so this comes back to, to, to the works of Cayley. And so if you look at the old literature, in, in the Hodgepito, this is called the Cayley form, because it was invented by Cayley. Now, now Van der Waarden, he calls it the, he called it the Zuge Ordnator form. Um, I think he should get a, the guys for for sort of bad name. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know, two guy that uh, just, just so indistinct. But I, 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 maybe the Germans like it more than I like it. And in, and in French, it's called Cordonne de Cho. I don't know how they say Cho in French, but I have no idea why they. they, they Named it after Charna Kelly, but anyhow, that's that's what it was. And then probably the general French feeling is summarized by this from a letter of growth and okay. so, so we clearly we did not like it too much. Okay. Um, and so well, so what scale is 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 work? He wanted to parameterize space curve. Okay, and then use the Cayley hypersurface to it. That said, well, he looks at the, the Grassmannian of lines in P3, and then he just takes all the lines that, that have a non empty intersection in P3. And now, well, so, so for a line to meet the curve is one condition, so that means that I get the hypersurface in the Grassmannian, and then we know how to parameterize hypersurfaces, it's just a linear system. Kelly had the added advantage that this Grassmannian is just a quadric inside P5, I think. So, so that means there was an actual equation in, in P5 he could write down up to this quadric. So it was really a some sort of very transparent what, what he got at the end. Now, if you look at it sort of slightly differently, it's, uh, it's what Kelly knew. Okay. So then, so. So I can sort of think of this as, uh, as the union of, of all points, the line that meets C. It's over and over counting, but, but it's fine. I mean, it's just a P11 over it, if you look at it this way. But, but if you fix P and you look at the line through P that meets C, that is exactly the image of the projection of C from P. Okay, so now here I, I, I believe that you see the connection uh, with sort of my definition that you look at the scaly hypersurface, then it contains the same information as all the linear projections, all the images of, 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 of the linear projections. And so then in higher dimensions, you sort of do something same if you have a that if you do have a closed subset of pure dimension n minus one, but then the Cayley hypersurface, then if you look at, at the, the, the Grassmannian of the so the complementary dimension minus one, yes, so we want to general ones to be the joint that have non zero intersection. And now again, I sort of reparameterize uh, in the that I well, just, just think of it there are these projection centers, and then it, 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 like the linear subspaces that contain, contain the projection center that means the, but that's exactly the same as the images of all the whole linear projection from Z to, to PM. Okay? And so and so at this scaling hypersurface, this this more or less contains the same information as all the linear uh, 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 projections. And now, uh, so 
this is an ocean that's that that sort of nice if you fix your projective space, but you know, our objects they, they do not sit in a, in a fixed projective space. So so you know, that's why it's natural to 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 switch to these other notions where I don't just say that I, I'm in a fixed projective space and I look at linear projections projections, but I look at the arbitrary maps. Okay? And so that's that's a sort of fairly natural step. And so now but Okay, and so then, um, what are the basic the, the theorems? Of course, I want to do this in families, okay? And so, now, uh, one thing is that you can extend the definition of the Cayley hypercircuits to, to, to families, well, uh, assuming what? So there should be pure relative dimension n minus one, that we have fine. G these flat the generic points of each fiber. Again, for Mount Four divisors we have that. And we have this embedding dimension condition at the generic points, which again Mount Four divisors. But it seems that these are the conditions that mm, may, may make it possible to extend the definition of of of, of, of the theory. Okay. And now if, if S is local in an infinite residue field, then the following guy, you know, right? that the Cayley high press surface is flat over S, that, that the images of all projections are flat over S, or the images of general projections are, are flat over S. Okay. And so that's what basically the, <coughs> what I would like to say that the, 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 the right notion should be that the Cayley high press surface is flat over S. Okay, so that's the right notion. But of course you have to prove this is independent of, of the embedding that you chose. And and because of that's something that I don't know how to do. Okay? And so so that's why uh, that you think about this, there are sort of five sort of natural versions of this idea. And so we already define C flatness that so that the, the all linear uh, uh, projections should have a, uh, some, a flat image. Then you can do a stable version that, that, that they first take a barrel laser embedding and then you take a linear uh, uh, projection. Now then this is K flatness, which maybe is the most natural if you, you sort of try to write on something. Well, Actually, this is probably even better the local K flatness that instead of mapping to Pn, I just take some open sets and I map them to ENS. And then, of course, you, you would like these, these notions to be formal local. So then I want all morphisms after their, their completion. And so, probably the last one is the most powerful. Uh, but, okay, and so. The conjecture is that these are all equivalent. Okay, it, 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 it's not it, so. I, I, I um, and so, so the, 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 the first one, um, it so it may not be. I certainly have examples of very small fields. Yeah, or very small fields. There are just finitely many the, the projections and. And things can get sort of messed up there. They are not enough to be to be sufficiently general. But I don't have an example over infinite neat fields that these are actually different. But anyhow, so to the best theorem I could prove is that the three red ones they are equivalent. Okay. So the stable C flat flatness, K flatness, and the local K flatness they are equivalent. Well, the thermal one D is uh, proper, no? And you complete along the ideal. Uh, well, no, 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 I complete just at the point. At the point. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yeah. Okay. And so, you know, the formal K flatness says that no matter which point you complete, so the whole, whole projections you can, you can get it from the completion. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and as a formal K flatness, it implies all the others. And so here, 
all of them, they apply the one they're talking about. Was in the other areas, that's harder to do. So, uh, well, let me just point out a few subtle points. So that if you want to work with with families, then the, the one problem with K flatness is that in one that in one fiber there might be more with two B and this does not extend nearby. Yeah, so the P car group might jump, so there might be. Some device, some light bundle that exists there, but sort of not near, nearby, and so so to do so things like openness is not natural with uh, with, with K flatness. Now the other thing is that so for the F fine version, one problem is that there is no neutral normalization. Um, I mean families. So it's not too hard to write down an example of morphism. In fact, like this can be a smooth surface. So morphism is, is f final dimension one, but there's no finite morphism, even if you localize or, or complete to, to A1. Yeah? So Newton normalization says that anything f final dimension and the finite morphism to AN, but, but it does not hold in family. So it, it, it's okay. The projective version is okay, interesting, but uh, in in families, but the affine version is not. So so uh, I mean, this is sort of one one uh, one thing why it, it, it's sort of technically harder to work with the affine version. There might not be enough maps that you, that you would like. Um, Okay, so now what are the good properties of, of, of K flatness? So, so and then we have this thing, we have relative Mumford divisor. So, of course, there's one good property is that V is flat and it is K flat. Yeah, so fine, I mean, we like flat families. Okay. Now, the, the also a nice thing is that K flatness also it can be checked over. All art in basis, so it's again the same as as with flatness. Now, if the morphism is smooth, then flatness is the same as K flatness. So it's only at the singular points that uh, we get something new. And if the fibers are normal, then again flatness is the same as just K flatness. And if the base is reduced, then K flatness is just the same as having a Mumford device. So that, so that at least we have a notion that that uh, over reduced bases is the same as we had before. Yeah, we don't get anything thinking over reduced bases. So that now K flatness also have some have some properties that's better than flatness. So for instance, if I have di that are, are k flat, that the union is is k flat. So this is not too true for flatness. You know, we have these two lines that are to intersection. Of course, the lines are flat, but the sums are not flat. Whereas with k flatness, this doesn't happen. If, if the individual components are flat, then the union is k flat. Um, also, if the multiple of something in this k flat, then the original is k flat. Again, this is not true for flatness. That it can happen if something is flat, but the multiple is not. Okay. And I believe also the other thing, the multiple can be flat without the original. Okay, and it's also preserved by linear equivalence. It's also not true for flatness. So there can be linear equivalent divisors. One is flat, the other not flat. But for k flat, this, this is not happening. So, so Actually, I think these are very, very nice properties. So, because of this, I hope that that, that uh, people will find that K plus. Hmm? Does it sense? No, no, Well, you know, well, my lecture goes through it. So, well, anyway. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so these are the good properties. Now, in Tom says here is the best property. 
that we have that it has a, a Bertini type theorem. So if I have something that's projective of pure relative dimension at least three, and I have a relative Mumford divisor, then I want to restrict it to a general hyperplane. Okay? And now, what turns out that I have a, a Bertini theorem, not just down, but up. And so, but to come down, this is not surprising. I mean, it's, yeah. So, that if D is k flat, then its restriction to a general uh, uh, divisor is also k flat. But the nice thing is that you can also go up. That, uh, the, that if the restriction is k flat, then the original one is k flat. This is again something that's not true for flatness here. Yeah? So to come down, it's okay. If you have something flat, take a general hyperplane section that's also flat, but the other way, it, it does not hold for, for flatness at all. And, and in, so, so, so the main reason for this is that the Picard group or the smooth scheme over an Artinian base is really changed. And I told you that when the smooth had dimension two, so I did it for A2, then the Picard group was infinite dimension. But as soon as you are in dimension three and up, then the Picard group is trivial. Okay? So uh, that means that sort of nothing thing surprising uh, can happen. Okay, and so this in effect says that k-flatness is really a theory about divisors on surfaces. If I want to know that something is k-flat, I that I need to cut it down until I have a family of surfaces and there are some curves on them. So you know, that's why that computation with curves is actually so useful because because nothing new happens in, in the higher dimension. Okay, uh, so now let's see. And so, well, of course, I just say the last state projection and the mistake is scheme theoretic image. But, um, of course, as you look at Harcher, then it doesn't say at all how you would compute this. Um, and so, well, so here is a, a something. So you have to to notice that, that the roots of a polynomial t is the same as the eigenvectors of t on this on this uh, finite dimensional vector space. Yeah. And so the characteristic functions of the roots, they are the eigenvectors. So then if you cut it a little bit, you get that if I have a, 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 a finite RT algebra, where R is some arbitrary ring for me, it will be local, usually, but it's not, not too important. And I have a free module over R, then I can write it, well, I assume three, so, so it can be written like that. And I have d times e i is some r i j, and then the equation of the projection to the spec r t is exactly this. Yeah, this is exactly how you get the get the eigenvectors. Okay. Now the point is that if you define the image like this, <laughs> and so so as long as the map is birational, then this is the scheme theoretic image. But this gives the right definition, even if it's not birational. So, so if there are multiple, multiple roots, then, then so this counts the roots correctly. Okay? So, so, uh, the, 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 that's all I Okay, so now how to compute projections of curves? Okay? And so, well, I would like to project to the spec A U V where I assume that A is is R Artinian, and then I would like to project something like sometimes like a curve. So I just look at the structure, see. 
Now, if I choose U and V sort of generic, then this M will be finite over, over A of U. And now, alpha term is not free over it, or that's flatness, but I don't know flatness, uh, but at least over uh, the Lorentz series, it, it will be free. And so, that means the equation of, of the projection out of this, this freeness is exactly this determinant. Well, these are, of course, the Lorentz series. And now, and now it turns out that sort of this is now flat over, over where the power series is, if and only if this equation is in the power series. And so somehow you have to, to check that when you compute determinant, then the negative powers cancel each other. Now, and so the, this is why it's easier to, to work with curves. So what's the main advantage of working in dimension one? That we can ignore the higher term. So I mean, for the simplest example, but if you think about determinants are just, you know, just longer multiplications, that if I have two Laurent series, then the product is, is a power series if and only if this holds after I add sufficiently high degree terms. Of course, I mean, I want to, to apply it, I just ignore higher degree, degree terms, then I get a, 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 a polynomial. As soon as you go to two dimension, this is not true. So but this is, is never a power series. In fact, no matter which polynomial you put here, non-zero polynomial, this will never be an actual power series. So simply ignoring higher degree, degree terms does not, not help you. Now, okay, so why is this good? And so let's try to think about what kind of maps, maps do I use to project? So for C flatness, I use linear projections, yeah? So this is just AU plus BB. Uh, for k flatness, I can put here an arbitrary power series, very complicated projection. Okay, now c flatness with these Veronese, eh, I can put here any polynomial of degree at, at most d. Okay, and now you say why, why this is good, because uh, k flatness needs power series, but if I can ignore the high degree term, then I'm down is a uh, combined with linear case. And so, so, so that the, the lemma is if I have a UV holomorphic with sort of matrix RIJU, as of, of course before, then there is a polynomial here, which essentially I just ignore the high degree terms. It matrix this uh, such that there are that is, ah, uh, there shouldn't be a prime here. Yeah, sorry, there shouldn't be a prime here. So that the matrix computed from the power series is congruent to the matrix computed from the polynomial up to high degree. Uh, which means that here it is true that if I look at the holomorphic projection and I look at the high enough approximation, uh, then if one, gives me something flat, then the other gives me something flat. I don't know why this says like you, I should say that. Okay. Uh, and so, so that means that sort of this way, they, uh, I, I, I can go between K flatness and, and C flatness. Now, one advantage, so before I had this problem that, uh, that you see that, uh, that there might be some morphism of the central fiber that do not extend. Uh, but uh, but the Veronese automatically extends the whole family and the linear projections they extend. So suddenly, the, 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 this extension problem that I had before this is now gone. So I, I didn't understand that how we were restrict to an arbitrary power of series to holomorphic. Uh, in the lemma, say holomorphic. Uh, well, I, I think I use power series and holomorphic. Oh, okay. As a, a, a sort of synonyms, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And so, ah, no, I, I again managed this stuff early. So, so the, that's, that's, that's sort of, hey, that's an amazing slide. Well, okay. And so, and, uh, hmm. Oh, okay, so the, the and so the, the, so the, how does the the, the group of these equivalences is go? So you know that the start with sort of this higher dimensional case, and then I have to prove this Bertini for all three of them. Right? But once I have the Bertini done, I can just cut down. I have curve. But this is more or less the, the argument that for curves, these three notions are equivalent. And then if I have the Bertini up, then I can go back. So in, in some sense, it's a, it's a, a, a very unnatural process. And so I, I so try, try hard to, to prove directly that, that, that this, that, that, that if a projection is, is flat, if and only if it's, so, so the, 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 if I have some projection given by power series, then this is flat, if and only if all high enough truncations are flat. But I could not, not do it. It, 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 it. it is probably true. And, and if this is true, then that's about the formal, well, the version would also so work. So that would be the, the nicest thing. And uh, th 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 that would be a more natural proof of, of, of what happens here. But, but uh, in particular, we don't have Bertini here on the formal case. Well, in the formal case, it's a little bit hard to claim what the generic hyperplane section is. And so, so uh, yeah. Yeah, but but so, so I think it should involve some sort of localization and, and yeah yeah so uh, but, but but indeed I do not know. Well, but the point where you take the formal conclusion can be chosen general on the divisor. I mean, do you have? That? No, I need this at every point. Yes. Every yes, point. yes. 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 So so yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the. And so the main conclusion is that there is a notion now uh, that gives the right moduli space, and and uh, but uh, you know there might be some other ones. So you know, I, I I don't know that that this is the is the optimal one, and I really would like to have this this proof instead of just using the Bertini to come down and then climb up some much more natural proof. Okay, thank you very much.